Hey, what's going on guys? It's uh, Phil Boycell, aka Rusty Shackleford here again. Uh, beautiful day in late April. Uh, I just wanted to pull out the new camera phone and look at redoing a video I did for you guys a couple years ago because I've updated the equipment. Sorry, my head's to the sky right now because I hear fighter jets overhead and I'm hoping that maybe they're close enough and clear enough that I might be able to film them in too. I just it would have been great timing, but no, they're too far off in the distance. I'm finally seeing them now. They're way out there. Anywho, um, the last time I did a battle belt setup, it was like a party belt setup, as in it was ran through my jeans. I decided to kind of sort of get away from that, or at least have other belts that do other things. So this is kind of my what would be direct action, conduct a quick raid or assault, or maybe a quick ambush. And then, uh, sorry, my sleeve keeps getting in the fucking way. Um, but it's not really meant to be worn for long periods of time, but it brings a lot of comfort and capability and still feels like nothing when I do need to wear it. So we'll just go from left to right. It is an Eagle Industries... I can't remember they call it the gunfighter or the operator, what they call it, but it's one of the Eagle inner outer belt setups that's basically a copycat or a clone of the Ronin. Right there I have my K-Bar TDI. This is for close quarters combat. Uh, these knives, I have a smaller one too. They're basically space makers. So if somebody gets on top of you, you're trying to grab your pistol or keep you from using your pistol or your rifle. You pull that guy out, throw him a couple of punches, a couple of jabs real quick, and uh, hopefully create some space that you can get back to your um, pistol or your primary weapon, which in my case is a rifle. Um, we got a climber's carabiner. Screw down so you don't screw up, regardless of your climbing or when they get old, you could use them as equipment retention. Um, this just holds anything and everything that I'd want to drop off there at this point. It's my gloves. If I needed chem lights, I could attach it to that. If I needed flex cuffs, I could attach it to that. Um, HSGI pistol pouch. This is one of the open top taco pouches. I'm debating if I want to replace or if I want to make these both closed top pouches or if I want to make them both open top for speed, but the fact of the matter is they're probably both going to have to be closed top, even though this is kind of a, a speed belt, so to speak. I was about to say close quarters battle mount belt, but in all reality, it's for anything and everything that is going to require speed, regardless if the objective is a building or a gravel pit. But I think for that matter, they're going to both have to be closed top just for the uh, equipment retention. You know, equipment retention is vital. Uh, beyond that, I have the, um, it, it is an IFAC. It's not just a simple blowout kit. This is a LBX uh, blowout kit pouch. Uh, inside there I have basically an entire blowout kit to include quick clock gauze, compression gauze, Z-fold bandages, uh, vented uh, halo seals, chest seals, uh, chest dart, nasal catheter. There's a tourniquet on an SOE original SOE bungee kit on the bottom. I have mine. I used to have it oriented down, so I pull it and all the stuff would fall out. But now I have it oriented up, and I really need to get one of those IFAC sleeves that goes in there so it acts as a tray. And the IFAC sleeve could be a tray within a tray, so you open up this tray and you pull out the inner tray and use it. So we're going to quickly move on from that because there's nothing much more going on there. This is a Safari Land mid-ride holster uh they're basic um forgot what the numbers on this guy is i'm gonna get a surefire 300 xb for my glock pistol here really soon so this is going to end up becoming a different holster and then on the front i have a extra tourniquet and of course there's a cobra buckle so uh you know, this works just the way every other inner outer belt setup works. The inside is lined with soft Velcro, and then you get another inner belt that you actually put through your belt loops or your pants that's uh, the hard hook Velcro. And then you roll this on over that, and they interact with each other so this doesn't move around. Um, 
Like I said, it's not 100% perfect. It does a lot of what I want to do for the most part. It's my go-to pistol belt, but I've been watching a little bit of Jeff Gerwich here lately, and he made the case that it's actually good to have one of these and also a padded uh, war belt. I was trying to get away from padded war belts for a while because I hated the way they sat on my body, and I hate how I'll go to lean over and they'll just flop up my back. So hopefully I'll make an inner outer belt, or I'm sorry, a padded war belt system. I hate using words like systems and platforms and da 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 da, but I'll make a better padded war belt that acts more like this stability wise. And, um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll see that as it comes out, which might not be for a long time. So don't hold your breath. Like I said, that this YouTube is not my day job. I have a lot more important things to do than make videos. But on the flip side of that coin, I get to do some exciting stuff in my life, like build out Pistol belts, one of my favorite things since I was deployed to Iraq was building out pistol belts. One of my sergeants ended up wearing the pistol belt that I built for myself originally, but they ended up giving my pistol to him, so I gave the pistol belt to him too. I think he actually bought it. He paid actual hard cash for it, so it's not like he just stole it from me. Like It was all on the up and up, but I just want to share this with you guys, and I'll see you all later.